Love is so short, forgetting so long, Neruda wrote. Dreaming of Hitler he includes the famous essay, Spanking, a Romance. Are you all right? <laughs> what are you reading? I'm scared of airports. And that's why you're reading about Hitler spanking you? Do you want me to answer you or not? When you're in the middle of a story, it isn't a story at all. I'm afraid of connections. But only a confusion, a dark roaring, a blindness. A wreckage of shattered glass and splintered wood. Like a house in a whirlwind, or, or else a boat crushed by the icebergs or swept over the rapids. And all aboard are powerless to stop it. It's only afterwards that it becomes anything like a story at all. When you're telling it to yourself or to someone else. Quite the philosopher, huh? One of the things that falling in love and falling in lust offers us is this amazing opportunity to reinvent ourselves and to see ourselves through someone else's eyes. And I sometimes feel that kind of intoxicating rush of the beginning of a relationship is also a process of being able to love yourself again for the first time. Um, and I think attached to that is a kind of illusion that you're going to be able to leave yourself behind. And all the stuff you didn't like about yourself will be kind of washed away by the gaze of your new lover who sees only the good things in you. Is actually going to happen. Can I make an appointment with you? What kind of appointment? I'd like to make a date to kiss you. Well, my schedule is fairly flexible. Is it flexible in 30 years? Uh, 30 years. I'd like to see you in Cape At the lighthouse in Lewis Park. image that we shot of um, the young Julie mm -hmm. and she's looking straight at the camera and it's in super eight and then she sort of turns away you know I didn't realize till you know seven or eight years later when, when I was making away from her the inspiration for that shot is a shot of my mother staring at you know a camera in super eight and then and then turning away so you know it's funny to watch it now because I hadn't watched it in many many years and kind of see the things that you were projecting onto the story and 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 shooting in a certain way and and that it was you know very deeply embedded in in my own history. People want to be in love every single day. What a liability. Throughout much of the thinking brain, gooey plaques now crowd neurons from outside the cell membranes, and nutty tangles, mangle microtubule transports from inside the cells. All told, 10 
hundreds of millions of synapses dissolve away because the structures and substructures of the brain are so highly specialized, the precise location of the neuronal loss determines what specific abilities will become impaired. It is like a series of circuit breakers in a large house, flipping off one by one. We were all attached to the way these events impacted us and so wanted to tell the story from our perspective. And I felt what was really interesting as the person kind of in the middle of all this was to sort of see how those versions were dancing with each other and how they conflicted. And it did seem to be incredibly important to people that their version was the right version. And it's interesting, I think you see that in every family. In every family, there's a dispute between siblings or parents of, you know, what what date did we actually do that? Or, you know, why did, you know, that event in our family happen? Or what were the details surrounding it? Mm -hmm. Everyone is so attached and connected to their own version of these events and unwilling to let them go. But not everyone can be right and not everyone can be wrong. And I just think it's really interesting the way we're so sort of desperate to explain who we are now by having a very specific take on what our history was. I missed that line. <laughs> well, first of all, there are the parties to an incident, those who are there and who are directly affected by it. Then there is a circle around that of people who were affected tangentially because of their relationship to the principal parties. And then there's another concentric circle further out there, which basically has heard or been told by one of the principal players about it. And all of these may have different narratives. And these narratives are shaped in part by their relationship to the person who told it to them and by the events. One does not get the truth simply by hearing what their reactions are. People tend to declare themselves in terms of what they saw, in terms of what they felt, in terms of what they remembered, and in terms of their loyalties. The same set of circumstances will affect different people in different ways. Not that there are different truths. There are different reactions to particular events. The crucial function of art is to tell the truth, to find the truth in the situation. That's what it's about. You don't ever get to an answer. You don't ever get to, okay, now we figured it out. We know exactly what happened. We know exactly what kind of person she was. I think those things are just illusory.